Good morning, or, I'm sorry. It's night, it is kind of nighttime now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Let's start off. Let's sing. First Noel, 85, if you need your hymnal. 85. Bethlehem right across the page. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, I'll still see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in thy dark street shine. The everlasting light, the hopes and fears of other years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep the watch of wandering love. Oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King. That's supposed to be sing. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God in parts to you Hearts, the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear him coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, that here Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. 
cast out our sin and enter in be born in us today we hear the christmas angels the great glad tidings tell oh come to us abide with us and lord emmanuel Christmas time. Christmas angels are here. And I didn't realize that song had so many uh, verses in it. But anyway, praise the Lord, old little town of Bethlehem. It's good to see everybody and uh, all you folks back way back there in Lodi Bar. You know where Lodi Bar is? It's the place where Mephibosheth stayed you know look it up <laughs> and the, David set the king, the chariot to find Mephibosheth that was Saul's grandson little lesson there back yonder in Lodi Bar <laughs> but I'm glad people uh, from Lodi Bar are with us <laughs> anyway good to have everybody praise the Lord and uh, this is the night the Lord has made Today was the day the Lord had made. We will rejoice. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. That's what I preached on this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength tonight. Praise God. And praise the Lord. It's good to see you. Remember Wednesday night, prayer meeting. And uh, 7, uh, 7 p.m., children's meetings, young people's meetings. And we'll look forward to Wednesday night. So, Make plans to be with us for Bible study. And uh, we'll study again the book of Revelation on Wednesday night. So remember that if you would. And we got a lot to pray about. A lot of people to pray for. And uh, a lot of people needs our prayers. A lot of people sick still. And uh, some people going through trials and testings. and Some deep water. Amen. And uh, we need to keep them all in prayer tonight. This is a good starting a busy time of the year. And. So, a lot of hustle and bustle. Amen. Y'all got your Christmas shopping done, I'm sure. Okay. Just so you got my gift, that's all right. But it's busy, and it'll get busier. And we're going to eat at Shrimps or Us, so if y'all would like to sign up and go with us, and we'll have a good meal there together. Praise God. Celebrate Christmas by eating shrimp and chicken and whatever. Amen. Be a lot of people eating. Amen. Amen. All right, men, come on. We'll receive our offering tonight. And give us the Lord leads, guides, and directs us in this hour. And uh, thank him for his blessings. God has been good to us. And he just blessed us so much. And we're thankful for him, his blessings. Let's keep in our prayers again those that are sick those that we've mentioned throughout this day, and uh, pray for one another here tonight. I'm here for a blessing, amen, amen. here for encouragement. And uh, though we might be a few of many, uh, uh, we're here tonight to worship God. And the Lord's here, praise God. The Holy Spirit is here, amen. Jesus said, I'm going to be in the midst of my church, amen. So let's pray for this offering. Father, thank you, Lord, so much. For your love and your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And Lord, uh, it's because of thy grace that Jesus came and uh, bled and died for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful day that you were born into this world to do just that. And we're looking forward to, to you coming back again. I pray that we'll be ready and watching tonight, waiting for thy soon return. Thank you for everybody that's come out tonight. Thank you for our congregation. We pray, for Lord, for those who could not make it because of illness, sickness, or whatever has come into their life. We pray for them. And, Lord, if they're listening by the way of the Internet, we pray for them that you'd bless them with the singing and the preaching of the Word of God. And bless this offering, Lord. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
I told Larry, I said, I've been using this tape since the mid-80s. <laughs> I hope it don't break, amen. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to break down and buy a CD. And have him record it, whatever. I think it's too old to record. Pretty brittle. Here we go, Zion's Hill. There waits for me a glad tomorrow Where gates of pearl swing open wide And when I pass this veil of sorrow oh, I'll dwell upon the other folks we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion boy that's where jesus is going to land one of these days and set up his kingdom and go rule and reign there on mount zion amen yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion amen well we've got something to look forward to and miss debbie's going to come down and sing and right for the message Do a little uh, foot stomping music tonight. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. Come and see what's happening in the world. I've seen nothing like this since I've been on this farm. Those strangers camping out there have a baby in their arms. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Must have been sometime close to midnight. Every old guy came knocking at my door. He said his wife was about to have a baby. She was gonna travel anymore. I tried to win trouble, but I ran it up. But I find shelter out there in the barn. Blankets, gloves, and blankets in the stable. At least they would be dry and safe from home. Come and see what's happening. 
Standing in the barn I've seen nothing like this Since I've been on this farm Those strangers camping out there Have a baby in their arms Come and see what's happening in the barn Sometimes we feel gone I was awakened Why just flooding through the window pane A star is bright as moon Why just shining And pretty music I could not explain And so I ran downstairs To have a look around And I tell you I could not believe my eyes A crowd had gathered all around the manger They were talking about the streets of gold Come and see what's happening in the barn I've seen nothing like this since I've been on this farm No strangers camping out there have a baby in their arms Come and see what's happening in the barn Come and see Shepherds shut the day been on the hillside Telling stories just to stay away the baby lambs were sleeping near the campfire. The ewes were huddled by a stone fence gate. And then the sky just seemed to open wide. With the sound of light, they could hardly bear. What they swear were angels singing chorus. You'll find the new Messiah over there. Go and see what's happening in the barn. There's been nothing like this with ever on this farm. No strangers camping out there have a baby in their arms. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Come and see what's happening in the barn. I've seen nothing like this since I've been on this farm. No strangers camping out there have a baby in their arms. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see what's happening in the barn. Come and see. Well, come see what's happening in the barn. Amen. Something what great happened, amen, in that stall so many years ago. Having visited earth for 33 and a half years, right. the Lord Jesus came full of grace and full of truth for 33 and a half years. Praise God. God visited this earth. Praise God. That's what we're celebrating. I want you to go back to Nehemiah tonight for just a few moments and let me continue what I was preaching along the lines this morning, I preached uh, uh, on what Ezra was uh, uh, explaining in Nehemiah 8. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that verse again, and then I'm going to go and read some more verses and tie it in with this, hopefully, in this message tonight. But again, I want us to think about the joy of the Lord being our strength. The joy of the Lord being our strength. Nehemiah goes and rebuilds the walls as we mentioned this morning, rebuilds the walls of Jerusalem. The gates were burned. He rebuilt the walls. He was re-instructing the people. Not only do you rebuild the walls, but you've got to re-instruct the people. Got to give them back to the Bible, don't you? And that's what Ezra was doing in the 8th chapter because the Bible says in verse 4, he stood upon a pulpit of wood. And I preached on the significance of the pulpit. There's a pulpit for a purpose. And that this pulpit, I say again tonight, folks, is for the proclamation and the study of the Word of God. That's the reason why we have a pulpit. Every church ought to have a pulpit. Amen. Now, uh, today, we've gotten away from pulpits. Uh, uh, we've moved our pulpits out. And I'm not, you know, going down off anybody or anything about that. If you can preach the Word without a pulpit, go, go, go ahead. But I need a pulpit, amen? And you need a central 
place where the Word of God is preached. And uh, so we put this pulpit right in the center of the church to proclaim the Word of God. Ezra, the Bible says, stood upon a pulpit of wood, uh, which they had made for the purpose, for the purpose of what? Of reading the Word, of teaching the Word, of reinstructing the people concerning the truth. Well, down in verse 5, he opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. And um, with lifting up of their hands, and they bowed their heads, and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And so, verse 7, the middle part, he caused the people to understand the word, the law. And that is another purpose of preaching the book. You've got to, you've got to help people to understand the book. You've got to try to convey the book, exegete the scripture, and open it up and to feed the people. And he calls the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. People will stand in their place when they understand the book. Amen. And so this is what he did. Verse 8, so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly, gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Well, uh, let's go uh, down to verse number, well, verse number 9, Nehemiah uh, there in the middle of the part says, This day is holy unto the Lord, your God, mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord, of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, and I want you to eat the fat and drink the sweet. And uh, I guess they had fellowship time. Amen. Homecoming. <laughs> and uh, send portions unto them for with whom nothing is prepared. Don't forget to feed the homeless. Don't forget the people out there that need food. And, um, so we, and, and that's an admonition for us tonight. While we're feasting this Christmas, let's not forget to, to prepare something for somebody that is needed, uh, in need of food. And, um, and so he said, do that. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither don't don't be sorry no more. You've wept, you prayed, you've repented enough, and now's the time to get the joy of the Lord in you. Hey, now's the time, he says. Because listen, how do you keep on going? The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your st strength. And I said, this is the key to a happy, steadfast continuance in the work of God. Uh, listen. Uh, we, we, we rebuild the walls, whatever walls are broken down in our life, whatever walls are broken down in our church, the walls of devotion, the walls of prayer, the, the, the walls of allegiance to the word of God, whatever that wall of separation could be lying in rumbles tonight and uh, rubbish. Nehemiah surveyed the city. He, he rode around the city in the midnight hour and he went because of the walls being torn down. And what did he do? He got a trowel in one hand and a sword in another. He built and he battled. Amen. He was a worker and he was a warrior. He was a supervisor of the wall and at the same time he was a shepherd of the people. So he had a twofold responsibility that is building and battling. I guess those two words there best express the ministry of the local church. Building and battling. Because listen, we face... We face the enemies just like Nehemiah faced the internal enemies and the external enemies. He had those on the inside that ridiculed him and um, caused him to get, get discouraged and, uh, and, uh, and lambasted him on the inside. But yet he had Samballot, Tobiah, and Gesh upon the outside hurling uh, their barbs at him. You see what I've always learned this, and I heard a preacher say this many times, when God unzippers the heaven to bless us, the devil opens up the gates of hell to blast us. <laughs> and you can always figure that to be true. The devil's going to blast you. The devil's going to come against you when God begins to bless you. And we never can sit on our laurels and uh, live on past victories. See also Israel after Jericho. Amen. Man, after Jericho, they shouted, they blew them trumpets, and the walls fell flat. But brother, they had an AI. <laughs> And they went out in their self-confidence and didn't pray and, um, and, uh, and, and do, didn't do what God told them to do. And uh, because of Achan and his sin, God whipped them by a few hundred soldiers at Ai. And they were humiliated. 
So uh, we've got our Jerichos, and then sometimes we've got our AIs. Victories and defeats uh, uh, abound many times. And uh, so I want you to see something tonight. And I, the Lord showed me this. There's joy tonight, first of all, because of forgiveness. We, we have the joy of the Lord tonight because of forgiveness. These people got forgiven. Now, I'll read over there in chapter 9. Chapter 9. And um, the Bible says they assembled with fasting, in verse 1, and with sackcloth, and with earth upon them. They threw earth upon them. Sackcloth and ashes. They were repenting. They were, were, they were having godly sorrow. And uh, the seed of Israel separated themselves. That's the key right there. You separate yourself from strangers. And uh, stood, and what did they do? They confessed their sins and uh, their iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place. And they read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God. They did it one part of the fourth part of the day. And another fourth part, they confessed and worshiped. So a fourth part, they read the word. And the fourth part, they confessed and worshiped. And uh, so... <laughs> Uh, Ezra says, hey, listen, it's time to, to rely upon the, the joy of the Lord and the joy of forgiveness. You know something? That's the only explanation for the forgiveness of sin, I believe, beloved, is found in the death of Christ. That's the only explanation I can give you. Not because you're just sorry for your sin, because Jesus died for that sin. Jesus bore the penalty for that sin. Someone said this, and I'll share it with you. Forgiveness is not something that we earn. It's something we accept as a gift from God. I don't earn forgiveness. Somebody said, preacher, do you do penance? No, I don't do penance. I don't crawl on my knees around a tomb. I don't crawl on my knees to a certain ritualistic cross. I don't do none of that. I don't make, to make my trips to Mecca or nothing like that. I go to the old rugged cross, praise God, and it's there that God forgives me and wipes the slate clean, hallelujah, amen. And so I'm gonna say to you tonight, forgiveness is not something you earn. If you're trying to earn it, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it. Oh, if I do enough works, I might get, no, no, no. You've got to accept what God did in Christ. And by the way, you've got to accept You've got to accept yourself because God accepted Jesus on your behalf. And you accept the fact that God accepted you. Amen. And that's the grace of God that he accepted us. That's the pure grace of God, the unmerited grace of God. There's joy in that. I think about the prodigal son. Boy, like that old prodigal son. Penniless, shameless, homeless. And there he was in that far off country. And he spent all of his substance. Y'all know the story. And the Bible says um, uh, he went back home. What? The father already had the forgiveness available. Amen. Uh, the father already had the forgiveness available. He did not have to earn that forgiveness. Uh, the only thing he did was come home. Amen. I mean, the father saw him come up that old dusty road in his rags and uh, hungry and dirty. And the father saw him come. The only explanation for that acceptance was the father was waiting for him. The father ran to him and fell on his neck and began to kiss his son and weep. As he, that's the only place in the Bible where you, there's a picture of God running. God running. God running after somebody. That, because the father is a picture of God the father. And God the Father is running after rebellious sinners and seeking rebellious sinners because it's not in us to seek him. He's got to seek, uh, seek us, amen. amen. And the Bible says uh, we, we, we are forgiven and we're forgiven because of God. And uh, what, what happened? They made Murray. They, they had a party, joy. There's joy in the camp. A sinner has come home, amen. And boy, there was great joy. They killed that old poor little fatted calf. Been out there gazing, grazing all the time. And finally he got his neck slick and slipped and said, all right, you're going to be somebody's dinner. We're going to have a party. And the elder brother didn't like that because the daddy never killed a fatted calf for him, amen. He stayed home like a good Pharisee does, you know. And good, look at me, I'm, I'm a pretty good boy, you know. But I'm going to tell you, there was joy. There was a party going on. There was joy in the home and in the family because this boy came home. The only explanation is the father. And, and listen, when you read that parable, because it's the parable 
of how God the Father accepts us. Right. Amen. God the Father accepts us. And uh, praise God for that. And uh, he accepts us on the basis of his mercy and his grace. Not anything we've done. Now let me give you this verse, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. <laughs> Aren't you glad of that? Now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Praise God, no condemnation. God is not only the blessed forgiver, he's the great forgetter. He forgets our sins, as I said a moment ago. As far as east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions for us. Jesus said, you can have my joy. You can have my joy. I think about what he said over in John 15, verse 11. Verse 11. Ah, oh, listen, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. The, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How am I going to keep on coping? How am I keep on going on in this age? This age where it's so against the church of God and the Bible and the people of God, so against the Lord Jesus Christ. This mystery of iniquity doth already work and we're seeing it further on down the road, you, you've got to have the joy of the Lord in you. The joy of the Lord. And Jesus said, these things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you. My joy, the joy of the Lord, might remain in you and that your joy might be partial. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Your joy might be full. Fullness of joy. Amen. Uh, Peter said this, I know you're going through fiery trials, and I, but listen, I know you love him whom, you, whom you've not seen. You believe on him whom, whom you've not seen, the unseen Christ. You're going through fiery trials, but then again you're rejoicing in them. How are you rejoicing? Because of the joy of God, the joy of Jesus. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> and so that's how you face the trials of life, the fiery trials, the joy of the Lord. Yeah, boy, that's contagious. You get around somebody that's got the joy of the Lord, it's contagious, amen. You either get out of the way or you join them, amen. You join them or get out of the way. Now, this joy is, is, uh, is seen in our forgiveness. But secondly, because that we're forgiven. But secondly, this joy is nourished in affliction. And I've already said a little bit about that. It's nourished in affliction. Now, a Christian who is, is one... Uh, the Bible says that we ought to always be rejoicing. Amen? Honestly, we all ought to always be rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul said. And again, I say rejoice. Eh, yeah, well, Paul, you don't have it bad like we know. Wait a minute, I'm in a damp, dark dungeon here. And I'm telling you to shout. I'm telling you to rejoice. Now, we're to be having continual rejoicing. And I know that's, uh, that goes against our grain, don't it? Woo! Amen. <laughs> and uh, not that we go around making a lot of noise because a lot of people uh, equate uh, rejoicing with a lot of noise. And, and it's not always that way, is it? It's not always with a lot of noise. And uh, really, uh, noise is really not a sign of spirituality because there's a lot of religions that make a lot of noise, but they don't have God. They don't have the Word. They make a lot of noise. Um, but that uh, the Bible says when you, join, when you join the Lord and you rejoice, you have a calm, quiet serenity about you in every situation. A calm, quiet serenity. It's called the peace of God that passes all understanding, Philippians. You can't comprehend it. You have a calmness about yourself. You have a peace about yourself. Why? Because you've got the joy of the Lord within you. Amen. Amen. I think uh, Jesus is a good example of this. Uh, turn over to Hebrews uh, chapter uh, number 12, if you would. Hebrews chapter 12, or it'll be put up there, one. But Hebrews chapter number 12, and boy, the joy of Jesus. You say, oh man, J Brother Rick, the Bible says, that Jesus was a man of sorrows. Jesus was a man acquainted with grief. We know that. But at the same time, God anointed Jesus with the oil of gladness. <laughs> Joy. He anointed him 
with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Jesus also had joy. I believe he had a good time. I believe he didn't walk around with a melancholy temperament, face as long as a collie, and head as around as a melon. That's the kind I got. <laughs> Amen. Boy, some of you life, it'd, it'd, it'd be a miracle. I'd shout all, I'd shout all over this place, some of y'all laughed. I'm kidding. I love y'all. Listen, this is the joy. And the Bible says here, this is the joy of the Lord. The Bible says, uh, well, verse 1, verse 4, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witness, let's lay aside the every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. That's the sin of unbelief. Let's run with patience, endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, there was a joy laid before the Lord, the cross. He was, he was uh, in, in shame and agony, robed in blood. And while he was on the cross, there was joy. Something about the joy of the cross. He despised the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of God. I'm going to tell you something. Joy is not having possessions. It's not having possessions. Jesus, didn't own it. Jesus owned it all, but he did not take ownership. Of, of, I mean, he, he rode a borrowed donkey, slept in a borrowed tomb, uh, 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 or a, uh, took a, 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 a boat, somebody else's boat. I mean, you, everything was borrowed, wasn't it? But he owned it all. He owned it all anyway. He spoke into existence. And that tells me that joy is not in possessions. You can have a lot of treasures and not be, not be happy or not be, have, be joyous. And joy is not positions. Oh, people are buying for, for positions, political positions tonight. Man, you, we can see it all over the place. And, uh, and, uh, but that's insecurity, positions as well. But I'm going to tell you, joy is a person. Joy is a person. Joy is a, a maintained. I'm going to tell you how it's maintained. Jesus told us, and um, leave your place here, but let me, let me just back up to chapter 15. Uh, of John, because he says, joy is abiding in me. He says, it's abiding in me. You want my joy? You want the fullness of my joy? He says, here it is. Verse 4 of John 15, abide in me. Stick in me. Stick with me. Don't move. And I'll abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. And I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And on and on and on, he says, you've got to abide. You've got to abide in me in order to have this fullness of joy. Now, this joy comes through submission. This joy comes through service. It comes through submission. If you abide, if you be submitted to me, if you stay put, when it might seem smart to quit, Huh? Well, it might seem smart to quit, you stay put. Having done all, Paul says, to stand. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to abide. It means believing God when it appears far wiser to be, uh, be led by everybody else. It means believe God. Just don't believe anybody and everybody comes down the pike. It means defying your feelings when you abide in him. It's submission. You, you, you defy your feelings, your fears, and you say triumphantly, your will be done. And so this joy comes through submission. This joy, number two, comes through service. Most Christians are activists. They're too active. You can, be, you can be up to your neck in church work and not get anything done. You know that. I've seen people up to their neck in church work and spinning their wheels, and all they are is activists. They don't abide in the Lord. They got an old cantankerous spirit, and they don't get nothing done, and they wouldn't walk across the street to try to lead somebody to Jesus uh, if, 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 it, uh, if God called them to do it. But they want to be activists. God didn't call us to be activists. No siree. He told us to, to abide. Uh, they get caught up in some kind of church work. But uh, 
all of it's not good. Not all is essential. The most essential thing I'm going to tell you tonight, church, is to get the gospel out and to reach out and to win somebody to the Lord. And I'm preaching to myself tonight. Amen. God help us. My soul. Be a witness. And uh, tell people about Jesus. We've got to reach out. That's service. Joy comes in serving. When people, if people would just get roll up their sleeve and serve the Lord for the right reason, right motive, I think the joy would come. Amen. Joy would come. Now, joy comes through submission. Joy comes through uh, uh, service. Joy is not having possessions, not positions, but joy is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. I like what old Leonard Ravenhill said about this. He said, Jesus knew the supreme anchor for his joy. The scripture says, he, for the joy that was set before him, joy, with a big question mark, joy, hanging naked and burning in the heat of the sun on a cruel calvary, joy amidst the cry of a rabble, joy with all the team having run off in the hour of testing, joy with no visible legacy give it, give, uh, to give to his disciples, joy to die frame between law, two law-breaking criminals, the joy that was set before him. Well, he had joy behind him, didn't he? He had a job well done. He never deviated. Father, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. <laughs> John 17, in his high priestly prayer. Lord, I finished it. Aren't you glad of that? I finished it, he said. He never deviated. His ministry brought liberation to many. Uh, he had spoken everything that the Father had requested despite criticism and vilification. What joy Jesus had. It was joy behind him. It was joy before him. This was the will of the Father. The cruel cross which he endured, despising the shame, would mean liberation from sin for millions of people. He saw the bride. He looked out yonder through the corners of time and saw a foreknown bride that would come together and love him and love on him and one day go to heaven and be married to him. Amen. He saw us. <laughs> he saw us. Praise God. The joy that was set before him. Well, that's the joy of Jesus. He's the source of it. He's the source of it. Let me say, secondly, he's the strength of this joy. The strength of this joy. Um, sorrow depresses. Sorrow dissipates. But joy is healthful. You want good health? The joy of the Lord will be your strength. It's conducive. It's conducive to a sound mind. Joy is. Amen. And a healthy body. Woo. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. I've seen a lot of people have a broken spirit and they just dry it up like a prune in the church. They had a wonderful countenance, but they let things get to them, bother them. They got bitter and they just like a prune. Joy is invigorating. Joy enables us to get things accomplished. And joy enables us to endure the hardships of life and the adverse circumstances of life. And by it, I thank God, uh, people, uh, though they offend us and criticize us, I'm going to tell you folks, the joy of the Lord will be our strength in the midst of all that. Notice some of the effects of this joy. Do you know joy will boost your faith? Yeah, it will. Where you get that, preacher? 1 Peter 6, uh, 1, verse 6 and 7. I, already, I think I've already referred to it, but wherein Peter said, you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, um, though your heaviness through manifold temptations. He says, you've got the joy of the Lord and uh, full of glory, though your faith be tried by fire. And then in verse 8, we read it a while ago, I believe, whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, you believe. And you, when you believe him, what are you doing? You're rejoicing in him. How many's ever seen Jesus? Nah, nobody here. Well, if you'd have raised your hand, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have said, get up and testify, Oral Roberts. One time he saw a 900-foot Jesus by his bed. 
I'll never forget that. And the, that 900 foot Jesus told him to build a hospital. And so he built a hospital. Anyway, didn't help him none. He, he died of cancer, I think. Bless his heart. Whom having not seen you love, and whom though thou you see him not, yet you believing, you rejoice with joy, joy that you can't talk about. And full of glory. Man, it's just something, it's in you. It's a capsule he puts in you. <laughs> it boosts your faith. Then it's a buttress against our foes. Now I talk about a buttress, that's a structure that holds a wall up to buttress something. And the Bible says in John 16, 33, these things have I spoken to you that in me you might have peace, Jesus said. In this world you shall have what? Tribulation, Tribulation hardships. But be of good cheer. <laughs> be of good cheer. I have overcome. I have overcome. It's a buttress against our foes. It holds us up against our foes. It boosts our faith. It's a bulwark against our fears. A bulwark against our fears. John 20, verse 19. They were out behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. What happened? Jesus didn't have to knock on that door. He walked right through. Peace be still. <laughs> then they were glad when they saw Jesus. Amen. They had, were there for fear of the Jews. Their Messiah had, and their hopes were, were, were dashed and uh, faded away. And now they were scared to death. And brother, when he had so said, what did he do? He showed them his hands and his side. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a bork against our fears. Boy, it's a day of fear, isn't it? The old devil loves to... Have us scared to death. He says boo, wants us to jump. Amen. Then, number four, it's a banner above our failures. A banner above our failures. Now, Brother Scott, let's see if you can get this verse. <laughs> Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter 3, 17 and 18. For those of you in Lodi Bar, it's on page 958. Oh, he's already got it up there. Boy. <laughs> oh, Habakkuk saw the Chaldeans coming down. God, why are you letting the enemy overrun us? Why, we're your people. God said, I'm letting them overrun you, and I'm persecuting you because of your sin. And so they come down, and against Israel, he goes from sobbing, then he goes to the watchtower in chapter 2 to seeing. God says, go to the watchtower, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And then he goes to singing in chapter 33. Sobbing, uh, seeing, and singing, shouting. The joy of the Lord finally comes. And he says, although the fig tree will not blossom, neither the fruit will be my vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, and the flock will be cut off from the field, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18, yet, yet, let her rip, brother. I will rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. It may look like we're going to hell in a handbasket. The bottom is falling out. I'm still going to shout the victory. Amen. It looks like the old ship of Zion's about ready to go down. She's sinking. She's taking on water. We ain't got nobody at the helm right now. And we're looking for some leadership in this country. But yet I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. Amen. God gives us that joy even though things are not working out the way they ought to work. Praise God. And by the way, I don't know how much worse it's going to get, but uh, it could get worse before it gets better. I don't know about this time next year, but God's on the throne. But whatever happens, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You see, the joy, the, he's the source of my joy. He's the strength of my joy. And then i got to say this lastly. He, we got to share this joy. Share this joy. Now back to my text, and you don't have to turn there, but back to my text in Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, chapter 8. And I've done lost it. Uh, Scott put it up there. <laughs> Nehemiah 8, 10, and 12. Yeah. He said, now here's what you got to do. You got to share it. I've already, I already mentioned this. 
eat the fat, but go ahead and share it for others. Go ahead and share it for others. Others need the food. Share this joy. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Send portions to those who have none. You know, you just can't bottle up joy. No, you can't. It's got to be demonstrated. It's like, it's like uh, joy is like measles. It'll break out all over you. Huh? You get around somebody and they got joy, it'll break out all over you. And they get around somebody and uh, it'll either break out all over them or they'll go home mad. I mean, <laughs> you, you cannot keep it suppressed. You know, and one thing about this joy, you can't keep it suppressed. You got to let it out. It has to be expressed. And one sure sign, beloved, that you have the joy of the Lord is that you can't keep from demonstrating the joy. Now, that, that involves three things. Volitional, it must be expressed, and it's on your will. You've got the will to do it, volitional. It's like a volcano that pours forth. A volcano cannot be plugged or stopped up. It's got a fine expression. <laughs> Amen. So joy is that way. It's volitional. You've got to let it. You've got to allow it to come. Bubble up. Number two, it's vocal. Nehemiah 12, 43. Nehemiah 12, 43. One, two, three, go. Oh, well, you're good. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. Joy. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. <laughs> the wives also got in on it. Come on, amen. It's picking up right there. And the children got in on it. Boy, it would be good if we see young, our young people shouting, praising God. Amen. Amen. I'm waiting on you, Lily. <laughs> Amen, honey. <laughs> Praise God. The children rejoice. Children have a right to rejoice. Thank God for them. They got good mommies and daddies. They ought to rejoice. They got a good church to go to. They ought to shout, shout the victory. Rejoice. They got a good roof over their head. Food on the table. Children rejoice so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. Boy, they heard afar off. They said, man, old Jerusalem's full of joy. And they'll hear afar off about the church when the church is full of joy. The church of Thessalonica sounded out from all the world. Their work of faith, their labor of love, and their patience of hope. Everybody heard about Thessalonica. It was vocal. Vocal. You got to express it. Well, I don't have much expression, preacher. No. I do it quietly. Yeah, okay. Out of the abundance of the heart, what speaks? The mouth. The mouth speaks. Joy will gush out of your mouth. When it does, you'll speak positively and encouragingly. It won't be this home on the range stuff where the deer and antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word. Huh? You heard about that cowboy that went up to them old buffaloes on the range, didn't you? He rode up on that horse and said, you're the ugliest looking things. Beady eyed, old big headed, hump on your back. And they just started minding their business, grazing. Out on the plain, home on the range. He wrecked that horse around and rode off. <laughs> One buffalo said to another, I think we just heard a discouraging word. <laughs> <laughs> Vocal, vocal. Oh, my soul, listen. Jesus said, the joy that I give you, no man can take it away from you. It's uh, volitional. It is vocal. It is visible. That's my life's point, visible. Because, again, I would say, Proverbs 15, 13, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. 
They used to tell me, Rick, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. And so I put a coat hanger in my mouth. I went to bed with a coat hanger in my mouth, bless God. I was going to I was going to have a beautiful countenance. I was always going to smile. I went to school like this. Praise God. Y'all have to overlook me. My medicine's kicking in. <laughs> you see, beloved, it's vocal. It's vocal. It's visible. It is volitional. You encourage people around you when you have a merry heart. And so, brother, there's so much in this old world, this old earth that makes people sad. But, boy, we've got the joy of God tonight. And uh, you know what? The message of those angels so long ago on the first event uh, when Christ came was what? For fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Deity balled up in a little human baby. The hope of the world is found in that little baby. Sweet little baby Jesus boy. Amen. Well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's sing it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord it's my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I like his second verse. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water that I thirst no more. He gives me living water that I thirst no more. He gives me living water that I thirst no more. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Put that in our cantata, brother. <laughs> That'll be the finale. I'll sing it, Brother Steve. <laughs> Woo! This ought to be the happiest place in Palaka tonight. Amen. Happiest place in Palaka right here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The joy of the Lord. Now that's going to keep me going tonight. I will sleep a bit. Amen. I'll wake up dead dog tired tomorrow, though. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I'm born again. Saved by the grace of God. <laughs> I'm glad I've got hope tonight. Looking for that blessed hope. Amen. And the glorious appearing of my great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo. Amen. Thankful. I'm thankful for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thankful for everybody here. God bless everybody. Let's stand to our feet and we'll be dismissed tonight. And as we uh, leave this place, let's leave with that joy. That joy that the world uh, cannot take away. The world cannot didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow together in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. Lord, it's my strength tonight. It'll keep me going. It'll sustain me. It'll direct me in the days ahead. It will help us all as a church to have your joy in the midst of this place. Everybody shouting and rejoicing in you and loving one another, especially during this Christmas season. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Turn around, shake hands. God bless you, everyone. And.